Two-factor authentication or 2FA adds an extra step to your login procedure such as sending a code to your phone, which helps to verify your identity. Using 2FA for the SSH login to your Linux servers adds an extra layer of security and only requires minimal changes to your current setup. Hi, my name is Bernard, I'm a software engineer working in Vienna and in this video I'm going to show you how and why to add a 2FA login to your Rocky Linux machine. By default, when you authenticate to your Linux machine, you are either prompted for a username and a password or for an SSH key. However, both authentication mechanisms just require to have a single factor, either the password or the key. By having a two-factor authentication, you still need this one thing that you have, the SSH key or the password, but also a second factor that is on your phone, for example. So in a typical setup, you have an authentication app such as Authy or Google Authenticator, and this generates six-digit codes now, if you want to log into your server, you enter your password or your SSH key, but you also have to enter this six digit code that's changing constantly. The reason behind this second factor is that once somebody gets or guesses your password or your key, they still cannot log in because they don't have your phone, hopefully. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up such an authentication mechanism. So each time you log in via SSH to your Linux server, you are prompted for this second factor on your phone. It will also uh, be possible to have emergency access codes that you can save in a safe place, uh, which allow authentication even if your phone gets lost or something like that. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set this up on Rocky Linux, but it's also the same for CentOS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. All right, let's get started. I have set up a blank Rocky 8.3 release candidate machine, and we'll start by just SSHing into that. Right now, it uses just the public key authentication, so I can log in without any uh, prompts for a password or something else and just uh, to verify that we actually run Rocky Linux, uh, let me just cat the ETC Red Hat release. And as you can see, we are running Rocky Linux 8.3. So at first we need to install the Apple release repository. So let's do that by running dnf install Apple release. And this will take a few seconds and now we have this uh, extended repository where we can install the Google Authenticator package. Next we will install the Google Authenticator, the QR encode and the QR encode libs packages. I'm just waiting for the confirmation window and yes, the three packages have been found. Let's enter Y to accept the proposal and also enter Y to accept the GPG key for the repository. All right, we now have the three packages installed and now we can uh, set up the Google Authenticator package. Um, we, we just run Google Authenticator minus S and enter our home directory. So I'm now authenticated as root. You could, of course, also set it up for a different user. Authenticator. So we tell this uh, Google Authenticator package to save the uh, initialization data in this directory uh, in the home directory of the root user. So we run this and now the authenticator uh, program prompts us if we want to generate time-based authentication tokens. Indeed, we want to do that, so enter Y and continue. And now you will be presented with this huge QR code. So what you need to do is actually make the terminal a little bit smaller here. So we can read this on our mobile phone. It's quite important that you have the whole 
QR code readable. Mm, this should do. And now I will get my phone out. Of course, you won't be able to see that. And I will add a new account in Authy. So you can also do this with Google Authenticator or any uh, authentication app that you want. And you just point the phone to this QR code. Uh, I need to make it a little bit bigger. Yes, now it worked. And once this code is set up, you can uh, generate uh, six digit authentication codes with your phone. So I will do, th do that on my phone and enter this code here as a confirmation. So in my case, the code is 245757. Press enter and it confirms to me that this code was what the authenticate app expected and you also get some emergency scratch codes please make sure to save those in a safe spot so you can access the server for example when your mobile phone gets lost or something like that um, yes we want to update our Google Authenticator file with this uh, new newly initialized uh, setup and we also uh, enter yes for all the following prompts. Now that this is set up, we need to make three changes to the SSHD config. So I will use WIM, but feel free to use any editor of your choice and edit etc ssh sshd underscore config. And what we are going to change is uh, at first to uh, make sure public key authentication is set to yes. So it is not set to yes right now. So let's change that and remove this um, hashtag uh, in front of the, um, the line. So it's no longer commented out. Next, uh, we want to make sure that challenge response authentication is set to yes. So again, uh, just comment out this no version and leave the yes version and uh, finally we want to make sure use PAM is set to yes but this should already be the default. Uh, then the last change uh, we need to make is in the last line of the file we insert a new line and uh, write authentication methods plug public key keyboard interactive all right with all those changes in the sshd config file we are now going to also make two changes to the pam.dssh config uh, we will edit etc slash pam.d slash sshd uh, and this pam module is what will prompt the user for the uh, two-factor authentication uh, on login. So what we have here is uh, this line that's uh, starting with auth substack password auth. So we will comment that out because we no longer want to allow our users to simply authenticate with their password. Instead, we add a new line at the end of the file uh, that says auth required pam underscore Google underscore authenticator dot so and the secret is set to the one we generated in the home directory slash slash ssh slash Google authenticator. All right, with those changes, we can now restart the sshd service Oops. and i will try to connect to the server in a new terminal tab 
because if we made some mistakes in the config, it could be that we lock ourselves out of this machine. So we don't want to do that. Uh, so we do it in a new tab. And interestingly, I'm now prompted for a verification code. This is the uh, six digit code that is generated on our phone. And I will enter this. In my case, it's 885093. Uh, you cannot see that anything was entered because the uh, this blinking key sign uh, will not change on input, but I entered the six digits, press enter, and now we are logged in. So we have this second authentication factor that is required for connecting to the machine. All right, in summary, we now have a second factor required whenever we want to log in to our Linux server, which will drastically improve security. I hope this was useful. Please let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.